my presentation, the title of my presentation uh, is Mapping Sociological Approaches to Disability and New Direction for Social Policies. The principles contained in the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities are not producing the expected social impact. And inclusion policies are progressing slowly. The Convention provides a moral compass. However, the right based approach, even the human right approach, is an individualistic one. Some scholars have pointed out that the families and the others affected by disabilities are almost completely excluded from convention. Simply removing barriers that hinder people with disabilities from participating in social life is not enough. Even if these barriers are gone, people with disability can still be disadvantaged and their lives may not flourish. To promote the human and social condition of people with disabilities, we need policies that can eliminate disadvantages. We need policies and provide more opportunities from them to accomplish the, their personal objectives. The question is, how can we achieve this positive change? The thesis I propose today is that a new paradigm of disability is needed. I call this paradigm relational, in that it does not consider disability either an individual attribute, as the medical, medical model does, or an attribute of social structures, as the social model advocates. The relational paradigms consider disability as an emergent property of social relations that make them problematic for the agent. I will discuss my thesis in three main sections. First, I will outline pros and cons of the two main paradigms used to read disability. Secondly, I will focus on the issue of agency which is a key juncture for orienting disability policies. Thirdly, I will argue how the relational paradigm redefines disability and opens up the new perspective for social policies. So section one, sociological paradigms, models of disability and social policies. The disadvantage experienced by people with disability has been interpreted through two sociological paradigms, the social deviance and the social oppression, which underline respectively individual impairments or social exclusion. Behind divergent sociological paradigms, two models of disability, the medical model and the social model, can be considered the basis for social policy interventions. The policy related to disability based on the medical model mainly focus on social and health services. Contrary to these policies, health and rehabilitation aspects are considered as a condition for social integration. Additionally, these policies have a welfare rehabilitative function aimed at ensuring that people with uh, severe limitations have access to minimum income standards as their chances of social integration are often reduced. These policies have a limited impact on social organization as they center on the individual. For the social model, the disadvantage status of people with disabilities is not an intrinsic feature of their impairments, but is socially created by a disabling and disabled society. The social model of disabilities has brought about a shift in focus from the body itself to the social and cultural relations that, that affect the body. The shift opened a new avenues for the development of policies that go beyond 
health and social services. These policies include the elimination of architectural barriers, integration in schools and workplaces, and access to information and communication technologies. Policies inspired by the social model promote social organizational change more effectively. However, policies inspired by either the medical or social model only address some of the mechanisms that contribute to generating social disadvantage. On the one hand, the medical models tend to prioritize biopsychical mechanisms while underestimating the role that the sociocultural context can play. On the other end, the social model focuses on economics and social structures, but overlooks the effects that bodily and functional limitations can have. Perhaps the best improvement due to the social model is the design for all or inclusive design projects. Independent living policies represent the most advanced frontier of the social model. They signify a shift from an adaptive logic to a proactive one. The slogan, nothing about us without us, encapsulates the programmatic platform of the disability rights movement. Independent living policies prioritize the direct participation of people with disabilities in decision-making for their life projects, promoting agency from an emancipatory perspective. There are two typical approaches when it comes to interventions. The first approach is inspired by an individualistic view according to which the market is considered the guarantor of emancipation and people realize themselves as consumers. Second approach is systemic, where policies are designed to recognize and protect people's rights. This includes both citizenship and human rights. Securing people's rights is the condition for the person to flourish. Following this issue of independent agency, the question is, what policies do we need to remove the social barriers while promoting the flourishing of people with disabilities? Section two, disability, social relations and agency. The Convention on the Right of Persons with Disabilities affirmed the autonomy individual independence and the freedom to make their own choices for people with disabilities. This property characterizes the conception of agency typical of individualism institutionalized by modern society. According to Priestley, social actors are considered independent adults only if they are able to act in autonomously, both physically and socially. However, this recognition become more problematic for individuals with severe limitations, particularly intellectual limitations. These people are often the least involved in independent living projects and are unlikely to participate fully in social life. As a result, their involvement in social activities may remain a mirage. To address this exclusion, interdependent relationship among the members of society have been proved back to be to the, to the forefront by some scholars. Accordingly, they reformulate the concept of agency from a relational perspective, arguing that it is always dependent not just on social relationship in general, but specifically on interpersonal relationships. The concepts of agency and the linked lives are central to the life course perspective. The life course approach allow for unified view of the various stages, stages of the experience of disability. 
policies aimed at people with disability, particularly those with a strong relational component, such as independent living policies, after us policies, caregiving policies, and inclusion policies, could benefit from using the enhancement of agency as a guide. The enhancement of agency can serve as a compass to navigate the implementation of such policies. This approach recognizes the capacitating function of social relations, but remains ambivalent. On the one hand, agency is an individual property, while interpersonal relationships are an optional or separable aspect of agency. On the other hand, agency only comes into being through interaction with these social world and within these relationships. Ultimately, while for the form interpretation, social relationships are essentially irrelevant, the latter considers the agency of people with disabilities as their own creature. To conclude, there are two possible paths for the development of the agency of people with disabilities. The first path, new agency as an individual's property and does not take into account the role of the social relations in enhancing it. According to this approach, the development of agency would be subordinate to individual's level of biopsychic functioning. The second part involves social relations as a primary factor. In this approach, social relations provide the necessary support to make up for the personal limitations and enhance his agency. However, this path can, at the cost of depriving the persons of autonomous powers and properties, which are conferred by social relations. The paradigm of relational critical realism allows us to overcome this appetite by assuming that the person and social relations belong to distinct orders of reality within a stratified reality. Pier Paolo Donati argues that a person is constituted by her relations, but not identical to them. From this perspective, regardless of any functional limitations, a person's biopsychic individualities has the potential to develop and take form through the social relations the person participate in over the course of her lifetime. Social relations, however, cannot fully determine or shape an individual's identity. Social policy should support what we might call the social morphogenesis of people with disabilities. How? Section, section three towards a new paradigm for disability and social policies. Critical realism utilizes the concept of emergence to explain how disability results from the interaction between the different order of reality that constitute it. Disability can be defined as a property that emerges from a relational system generated by the reciprocal interaction between symbolic and valid codes, the resource available in the relationship, such as the functioning of the biopsychic organism and the technological aids, the intentionalities of the subjects involved, and the ways in the which these relationships are regulated. The relational approach allow us to enter into the structure of a social relationship, observe its constituent elements and the mechanism that give the emerging social relationship disabling properties. Let me provide an example, example to illustrate my point. Imagine a university classroom 
that we free of architectural barriers. In such classroom, students with motor disability would not face any obstacle in attending lectures. However, a deaf student in the same classroom might face a disadvantage in following the lectures. For instance, if the lecturers turn their back to the students while writing on the blackboard, the deaf student may not be able to lip read, which could prevent him from understanding the lecture. Social disadvantage, therefore, does not arise solely from individual functioning impairments or social structures, classroom accessibility or teaching practices, but is an emergent property of the social relationship in which these factors are involved. There are several interventions that can be implemented to reduce the disadvantage of deaf students. For instance, the use of technological tools such as software that can translate the lecture's speech into written text in real time. Another approach is for the lecturer to modify his teaching methods to allow the student to read the lips. In both cases, by modifying the means of the learning process, the emerging relationship would have enabling properties. This adaptation the convention would call them reasonable, reasonable accommodation do not occur automatically. Other components of the social relationship, such as mutual intentionalities, should also be considered. Students' and teachers' motivation and will to respect regulations are crucial to these reasonable accommodations. Uh, conclusions. Disability is defined by relational critical realism and emergent property of social relations. This perspective sheds light on the mechanism and processes that produce disabling effects and provide the conceptual tools for systemic intervention that can generate the capacitating effects. As shown, in the example, implementing reasonable accommodations can impart capacitating property to the social relationship. In this view, the person's social morphogenesis is nurtured by capacitating property, properties of social relationship, such as the student-teacher relationship. Capacitating properties allow the student to to fulfill his social roles and achieve personal goals by increasing his agency. Social relations have the property to enable individuals to not only learn how to perform social roles, but also to develop the ability to be, to be themselves. However, the latter dimension is agency is often overlooked. In the context of a relational critical realism, institutional and social relationship play a crucial role in the process of humanizing the persons. During this process, I quoted Novaki, a person's social identity is formed in the dialogue between the I of oneself and other identities including the identities that are attributed to the individual by institution and the report. This dialogue is where ultimate caring or ultimate concern emerges and develops. This relational dimension has not been adequately valued, possibly due to the lack of appropriate tools. Social policies could be develop it in this direction, and to ensure that all individuals with disabilities, including those with severe disabilities, have their dignity recognized and their ultimate concern addressed. Many thanks for your attention.